Hi guys, happy Sunday. Hope you've all had a lovely weekend uh, and looking forward to the week ahead. Uh, I haven't been on for a while, but it's good to be back uh, and we'll do the, the same routine as before. Go through each of the markets uh, one by one. Any new ones that you want for next week, just put them in the comments below and uh, feel free to follow me on, on, on Twitter. The handle there you can see uh, just below me, S North uh, 19 and feel free to ask me any questions via my, my DMs on there as well. Um, just having a look here then at Euro to begin with, I always think it's useful to start as a complete blank page. Uh, and I was speaking with with Alex uh, on, well, Friday actually, so it was a couple of days ago. We've got our professional program traders which start on Monday, but we were talking about just trend lines and actually in the Dixie. But here we've got the Euro going back to its inception in, uh, well, yeah, beginning of the millennium. <laughs> but the uh, the all-time high trend line, which uh, you can see matched up to the 2014 highs. Uh, we are actually above there. It's quite messy, and, and, and we were sort of saying with, with the trend lines, you want to see a decent push lower. You want price to come down sharply like we saw here. And we're hanging around there, and I, I have to be honest, I am in two minds about where I think the euro and uh, the dollar are going to go in the short term. It wasn't too long ago that I was thinking we're going to break it and it's going to go 120 again and 125 on the futures. Uh, but then last couple of weeks, I've been more leaning towards we go 116 again. Ultimately, uh, keep an eye on your dollar index because that can obviously tell you a lot. Um, but each of these pairs that we go through might just show a, a different picture. And you can see how, how choppy that trend line is there. For me, I'd almost say that's now not even worth having on, but on your longer time frames, it would be. Uh, going to the, the daily chart then, uh, well, just before that, you can see on the, on the weekly, we're really just range band. For me, that's you know not interesting. Um, I, would, I would say how it looks at the moment, you, you've got quite a clear midpoint. 117.60 and then to the upside 119.25 and, and obviously this low that we had this is called it 116 handle which we've had good price action around for me it's, it's all about those two the way we uh moved off the 117 level it gives me a bit of confidence that we can start to, to push on but until we break above or below uh these two points i'm, I'm really I'm really in two minds. Let's go have a look at the, the daily chart anyway, just to uh, bring that into picture. And you can see the reaction that we had last week on the, the not last week, the 11th uh, of November. So last two Wednesdays ago, it, it, I was actually in a short, what well, at the time I thought was lovely, on an intraday break around here. And, yeah, it, uh, it hit this, this midpoint, which has been so good, and, and we pushed higher since. Um, how we finished Friday, for me, yeah, it, it's it's just wait, wait and see, unfortunately. I know FX at the moment has been slightly tame, uh, especially compared to, say, uh, other, other markets. But yeah, for, for me, it's about three points, uh, and really two that are closer. 119.25. Can we get a weekly close above there or can we get below 117.60? Uh, um, to the the upside, obviously worth just having on the, the 118.99, let's call it 119 area as well. One, two, three recent tests in four days of that point and it's held well. And then to the downside, you can see 118.21. So that's like a little mini range. Uh, that I'd be keeping a watch on. If we break the lows, then you know I think another test of 117. 60 comes in and while you do obviously have a couple of smaller levels below that's when you could start looking at uh, the 116 handle coming back in again um, ultimately uh, I would let the market in this case tell me what what's going to happen and weekly closes I think will be will be the, the main thing to keep an eye on uh, bias for the week for the euro um, I, I don't have one I don't have one in terms of direction. However, a, a close on the day or some decent breaks above that 119 handle, I'd be looking for longs. And if that is the case, then I think a short squeeze up to 120 could happen. Just be aware of ECB comments. Uh, if we do break the low that we had from 
uh, well, the 16th was the Monday, wasn't it? The Monday and Thursday, then we could be in in, uh, in action towards that 117 uh, handle again. But yeah, I, I don't have a view right now. For the pound, slightly different. I'm actually, let me just mark this up, I'm actually a bit more bullish on, well, I am more bullish on, on the pound. Reason being, nice nice break above here, but first let's just have a look at the, the weekly chart for, for cable here. Just remove all of those lines uh, and, and sort of draw out. You can see there's there is an awful lot of resistance uh, on this whole point for for the pound 134. I mean you can go back here and, and look towards you know years gone by. Obviously this is Brexit, um, but yeah, just just a little bit above where we're trading. Massive massive level of resistance. Uh, the the dollar is. Obviously, the most important thing currency-wise to keep an eye on at the moment is on that multi-month, uh, multi-month trend line. If that gives way and we have the idea that a deal is going to happen, we start pricing that in. I think we can really push on one thirty-sevens and one forty. So I think the risk reward of that trade is interesting. It's it's certainly something I would be thinking about. And this week. The way we finished last week, let's just go to the the daily chart. Um, let me just remove that. I, I am actually pretty comfortable in, in, in you know going out and saying, at least in the early stages from a technical point of view, I think the pound could push on. Reason being, the first close we got above this level um, uh, since we broke above it on the 28th of August. You can see it then acts as a good resistance on the way down. Okay, another test, another test on uh, the 18th but we finally closed on now you would also have to say this can't really take place until we break maybe above this this trend line so and the way i would look at it is if we break above friday's high there could be that whole short squeeze you're targeting 132 uh 133.28 which is this lovely double top and then it can push on 134s and that's when people don't want to be short this market anymore so I, I would still just be waiting, just be waiting, but a break above there and, and it, I think it gets interesting. To the downside, um, I wouldn't be looking to get short until we close below 131.84. We have done there on the 12th, but you see we come into the next level of support. So with FX at the moment, these big moves, while the dollar index is coiling up, and there could of course be big moves to happen, I would still have realistic targets. The euro on the break lower, you can see it hits that point. There's no real momentum yet. If you're long from the 11th or you got in after it fell to, to break lower and you got in on the 12th, you probably would be taking profit. Uh, you know, it's not a massive trade. For the pound, I think the massive trade comes if we can get those closes above 133, basically. To the downside, 131.84 goes. Yeah, just be aware. The 131 handle, good support. Has to be a zone, though, with the high that we got from the 3rd of November. Um, just uh, yeah, third of November. Yes, uh, what an interesting day that was. <laughs> um, but yeah, break of that, then I think you can get a bigger move to the downside. Be targeting all of these points here, second of October to the second of November. I mean, what a long you could say that was on the sort of day before the election for a number of these dollar pairs. You don't have to be a bit of a gambler to take that on, though. But yeah, looking at this. Pound bullish above 133. I am bullish for the beginning of the week. Now, that doesn't mean at the open I'm buying, but I would be interested if we can start to push above this trend line of 133. So, the downside, I think it's got to break Friday's low. It's got to break the 21st of October high, which is also the low that we had on the 4th of September before I could really start getting interested in, in some shorts. Um, nice little trend line, I think worth having on if we do get any momentum to the downside. You can see here, it's, it actually probably goes down to the 18th of May low, but nice trend line here. It's really for me, this starts the 30th of June, and um, yeah, I, I think at the moment the bulls are in control. I'd rather be long right now than short. One market that I am short uh, is, is the Aussie dollar, stop above these highs. Um, tiny bit offside on this position I, I got in on, on Thursday um, I, I don't know it's it's my personal way of trading and having a look at the stats and doing all these kind of things I, I very rarely interfere 
with uh, a trade once I'm in, yeah, unless there is you know massive data coming out or uh, comments that change the fundamental picture or correlated moves. So for the Aussie, I'm sticking with it. Um, I think like me, anyone short has got their stops above here. Um, just to give that information out there to everyone. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think, uh, you know, a close of the day above 73.27, that's when you can get that, that push, that continued push to the upside and you start looking at the, the high of the year again. Um, what happens if that high of the year goes? Well, let's put it onto the weekly chart. You can see the significance of this whole region going back to 18th of all, uh, to August 18. So quite uh, a lot of resistance just a bit above there. And there could still be another opportunity to get in uh, for a short if it was to, to squeeze up. So just be careful of that. To the downside, um, any Aussie dollar shorters, you want this zone to break. The lows that we had, double bottom 13th for 12th of November and also the high of the election, the 4th of November. It is in a bit of a range here. Uh, we did reject uh, the... Uh, the, the lower part of this on Friday were contained. We didn't necessarily finish up at the high. Uh, yeah, if not in a trade, you're waiting. You're waiting, and I think the trigger is, is a nice daily close above here, and then you're looking for, for longs, uh, or it's below, uh, and you're looking for those shorts. Targets to the downside, so the way I'm looking at, at managing this trade in an ideal way is midpoint for the, the long and the bottom of the range uh, mid range yeah this mid range part point for target one uh, and this this for the low here which is you know this is probably the low of second November but uh, more the bottom of the range so that's how I look at it I mean if it doesn't the trade doesn't work it doesn't matter it's still a good risk reward on it and it makes sense for, for me but yeah dollar index at the moment is is bang on some very important support Right now, I say the bulls are relatively happy if they're getting in from the retest of the 9th of October low. You see there, okay, one one hairy day and then you push up. You would have de-risked, you'd imagine here. I'd say no one's in control, to be honest, if, if anyone the bulls were. I'd say the pound bulls are in control, but key resistance coming up. Euro, uh, I don't, like I said, I'm not really sure, to be completely honest. I'm going to look at the yen, which... Um, you can see it has been drifting down and you know what about your you know like, these things are always easier in hindsight aren't they but you know look at this is beautiful double top failed uh, move lower you can obviously get in and that stuff above or you know you wait for you know a key break of say a technical area of support you get in on the retest on last Monday you ride it down and you know you, you come out on on this point here where you have good solid Solid support. What a uh, a trade that would be, and, and completely would fit in with the the way that I trade. Trend line here as well. No break, no break. So I'd still have that on. I would. Um, to the downside, obviously, just be aware of yesterday, uh, last week's low before you've got the sort of let's call it uh, an almost a double bottom on the the sixth and the the night so that Friday Monday as well. If we do get a continued push, just be aware of those lows of the year, which uh, would be, you know, a long stretch to get the, the low of the year, but a break below uh, the November low, that has to be starting to, to talk about. Uh, and then to the upside is looking at any of these previous lows or highs to offer a bit of resistance. I, you know what, to be honest, if you like the dollar strength, if you like there to be risk on with the, the vaccine, news potentially you know leading the way of people's opinions about the market i i think this is a good opportunity to get long you know based on that i wouldn't have wanted to get long friday to be honest um so i'll be interested to see what happens on uh on on monday or sunday evening in two three hours or so um but yeah it's quite an interesting it is quite an interesting area is I mean the safer play here is for the longest to wait above, you know this this low that we had on the sixteenth of November. A lot of support around here. So if we can get uh, a push on and above, then I like it. And I do like it a bit more. Just going to speed up. I don't want to take too much of your your time. Um, quick look over at gold. For me, gold uh, that eighteen fifty. It looks fantastic yet again. Um, Look at that. Look at the low. What's the low of Thursday? You bet to 8, 1850 on the nose. 
you'd have probably wanted a bit of a bigger push. That doesn't come uh, in, into play for for the longs. You know, I'm sort of, I've been always saying 1888. Uh, you know, if we can get a close above there, then then I like it. So for me, it's 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 a little range here. I'm happy to be late to the party uh, and get long. You know, once it closes above 1892, let's just call it, uh, and then looking for this little figure here, this low of the 6th of November. I like that. And then medium term wise, you, you, you're looking for gold to push on. And I think that's not a bad little play here. For me, that that gets the confirmation above 1892. Stop back in, uh, in here. You wouldn't want to be long there. To the downside, 1850 goes. Just be aware that it could move pretty quick. Um, I'm not a massive, massive moving average fan um, in terms of my sole decision. I, you know, would obviously able to get in with them in at an area there's a moving average where there's also another uh, area of support or resistance. But the 200 day moving average comes in and, and around that point and the 1800 handle and some support from the 14th of July. I think that's not a bad little trade. and. Uh, as well, I think that's you know would obviously get a lot of these stops out uh, and offer another opportunity to potentially get in. Um, so yeah, worth worth having that on in my opinion. If you think obviously gold is is gonna uh, is gonna get that breakdown, then uh, obviously that could be a point to take profit before you look down to uh, some of the lows from early summer. But yeah, that's how I see gold. Uh, the S and P at the moment, I did not like the close that we had on the 18th two rejections of that high uh you know i, I with the the guys in the advanced program that have uh, just finished and then continuing on I've, I've been saying for the the week that i wouldn't really be ultimately bearish equities unless we get below 35 22 on the day so that's the area i'm keeping a watch on to the upside the long happens for me above 35 76 or basically thursday and friday's high that happens I'm all for all for the longs. To the downside, then where would the, the sort of target area be? Thirty-five, forty-seven on the futures. I actually really like a long in this whole region here. Thirty-four hundred handle, thirty-four oh five. Um, would be comfortable to to stay in it as long as it stays above thirty-three eighty-two as well. So for me, that's that's the nice area to to get involved at. Um, but if you're riding the short, these. Would all be profit targets that I'd be be looking at. Um, to the upside, obviously, if it breaks thirty five seventy six. The your immediate view has to be towards that all time high uh, and some of those recent highs that we've we've had. I actually think the S and P is setting up nicely for a bigger move. Have we seen the high of the year? At the moment, I'd I'd say no. At the moment, I would say no. But below thirty five twenty two, I would not want to be long. Uh, until 3400 Nasdaq I'm kicking myself with the Nasdaq for missing out on this long look at that resistance resistance support support resistance comes back support probably the most obvious level in the world eleven and a half uh, thousand what a long beautiful you probably get your target straight away as well up towards here um, probably you know if you are holding any of this position it's, it's risk-free by now Hindsight is always twenty twenty vision, though, of course. Um, but yeah, the the way I see the Nasdaq now is, if not long here, um, you've obviously got a bit of support here, eleven seven hundreds. Let's just call it that sort of support from from last week. Uh, but I'm not too interested, but I'd, I'd say in getting involved. We're sort of getting squeezed both ways, you could say as well. I don't know. Bigger moves to to come. Uh, I'll keep an eye on eleven seven seven seven. Uh, as a key level of support, I wouldn't want to be long if it does get below there. And then I think you come back to this key mid-range point. You have a lot of support below there, um, but for now, I, I wouldn't be surprised to to see us contained within this range for for a bit. Just be aware of the top and the bottom. I, I would go with for for the Dow. So Dow Jones uh, did not like the close that we had on Thursday, similar to the S and P back below. The high that we had on the 11th came back as well to test some resist, uh, you know, the double top Thursday, Friday, like the S&P. From a technical point of view, it doesn't look too good to me. Um, however, if not in a trade, I would only be pulling the trigger on a short. <sighs> I mean, really, if, if these lows went as well. So similar to the S&P, you've got those lows, the Dow, 
these lows here. What days are they? They're going to be the same, 10th of November, uh, that sort of start date here. So, uh, so similar. Are we getting vaccine fatigue as well? Something to ask yourself. The, the moves off those headlines have been limited. Uh, Got to uh, be, I think, thinking about the rotation move as well. If we do have some ultra positive vaccine news, Nasdaq's going to be more susceptible if tech come under pressure. The S and P could as well. Uh, it's more the Russell uh, and the Dow that seem to be performing better. Double top 30,000. 30, Who would have thought it? Uh, I would have thought we got 30,000 back in January, uh, and we didn't. But uh, yeah, you know, one to one to have on there. We'll wrap it there, guys. I don't want to take too much of uh, your time, but any questions, feel free to hit me up on, on Twitter or in the comment section. I hope you have a great rest of your evening. If you're watching today, if you're watching tomorrow, I hope you'll have a, uh, a super week.